All right, now that we have all our layers positioned correctly and we know that we can output a good animation of this walking cycle, what I want to do now is, is I want to liberate the animal from its background so that I can just have the animal only and no background. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to turn off all the eyeballs, just clicking and dragging for all of these layers. And I'll go start with just the first layer, which in this case is layer 3, because I'm going to start with layer 3. And what I want to do is, is I want to mask out the background. So an easy way to do this would be to just erase the background. But we're going to use a little more advanced tool um, to work with separating the image from the background. And what we're going to use is a layer mask. So what you do is you select the layer that you want to work on. Notice I've got the eyeball select selected and I've got the layer selected. And I'm going to click on this button right here, which is a layer mask. And now what I can do is, is I can paint in this layer mask what I don't want to see. So in doing that, I will get my paintbrush here. And I'm going to change the paintbrush here a little bit. So I've got a paintbrush. I'm going to adjust the paintbrush. I'm going to take the size up to, let's say, 30. And I'll take the hardness to about 50%. See? And I can start painting. And when I paint, I want to paint black in this mask area. So I click on the mask area. And I need to flip these colors so that black is on top. Let me do that right here. Flip that so that black is on top. And now you can see that. I'm painting black, but the result is the effect is happening in my mask here, and the um, animal is being liberated from its background environment. So I'm going to do this now. The key is to really do this thoroughly. And as I do this, I can hold down the Alt key and I can click right here on this mask to see what I'm doing in my mask. I can see that I've actually missed a couple spots here, right? So right away, by looking at that mask, I can see mistakes that maybe I've made. I'm going to hold down the Alt key and click on the mask again. All right, now, when, as I start to get closer to the animal, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to zoom in, use my zoom tool. I'm going to zoom in, hold down the space bar, and position it. And you'll see that there's a lot of feathering happening along the edge here of my of my brush as I paint black in uh, as my in my mask into my mask which is making the uh, masking out the background layer um, there's a lot of feathering happening along the edge let's take a look at that so we zoom in and you can see that there's some feathering happening there okay I'm gonna zoom out well, it's hard to see but it, but it is so what I'm gonna do is when I hold down after after I select my brush I'm going to go here and I'm going to increase the hardness of the brush. And so that should give me a much cleaner line. Let's zoom in and take a look and see how clean the line is. So I got my brush and it's a much cleaner line. I'm probably going to want a smaller brush at this point, so I'll use the uh, brackets on my keyboard next to the P key. There's the curly braces and the brackets. And I'm just going to bracket my brush down. Once again, I can increase the hardness to, let's say, 85%. And this will give me a very nice brush. And once again, this is to feel. Uh, I like to have a little bit of a hard edge when I'm trying to um, paint a mask and trying to um, basically make the background disappear from around an object or a person or something that I'm trying to work with. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint around and once again when I'm doing this what I'm actually doing is I'm painting black in the mask, right? I'll show you here. My color chip is black here. I'm painting in the mask. If I hold down the Alt key click on the mask you can see notice the difference between the soft edge brush and the harder edge brush you can really see it when you show the mask so anyway as 
I'm going to hold down Alt key again, click on the mask, and for this first video, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this tool to mask out the background. And what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to do this for each layer of my character. So I'm going to show a few other techniques that might speed up the process in different ways we can mask and use this project as a uh, use this as a good way of learning how to control your layers, how to work with layer masks, and it forces you to learn by the repetition of having the uh, many layers to work with. This is a good project for which to learn with. Okay. Okay. I finished masking my first layer. Let's take a quick look at it. It looks pretty good, but I wanted to point out a few other things that we haven't talked about yet. First of all, there is the image at the bottom here, layer, eyeball on. If I shift click on the mask, the mask is turned off and I can see the original image. So the original layer image, there it is. Um, you can see it has gray background all over. And then if I shift click on the mask again, it turns on the mask and we can see the checkerboard transparency underneath, right? In actuality, when I made this mask, you can see it right here, it's black and white. And if I alt click on the mask, you can see the mask. And when I do that, you see, wait a minute, there's a lot of problems with this mask. Look at that, there's a lot of white spots in there. That's a problem, that has to be fixed up, right? The other nice thing about a mask, working with a mask, is that it's non-destructive. So let's say you're painting black, right? You're painting in the mask area, and by accident you go like this and chop off the front of his nose, right? And you're like, oh no, look what I did, right? Well, what you could do is, if you wanted to, well, and you can't, you will do this, you can just flip the colors from black to white, and now instead of painting black, I'm painting white, right? Painting white, you can see white here is the color chip on top, and if I paint white back in, I paint the mask basically back, I uh, remove the mask, painting the character back in. So that's nice is that you can work on both sides of your mask. You can paint the white or you can paint the black. Uh, just depends. If I go over a little bit, oh, there's some gray coming in there. I'll just flip the color chips again. Hit X on your keyboard to flip the color chips and I can paint the mask back in. Okay. So that's nice. The other thing that you can do to help you with this process is it's hard to see a gray background against a checkerboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer here, new blank layer, see empty layer right there, and I'm going to paint it with a color. So I'll pick a color like let's say a dark red here, okay, and I'll get the paint bucket. Notice I've got a blank layer here that I'm on. Just I just created a blank layer and I'll get my paint bucket. Right now it's underneath my gradient tool. Get that paint bucket and I'll paint that solid red on this empty layer. Now what I'll do is I'll drag this layer to the bottom. Okay, whoops. Uh, I ended up with two layers there. I'll delete one. How about I drag this layer up above that one? That'll be easier. Okay, so now I've got this red layer underneath and I can see the gray areas that I didn't mask out well enough a lot easier. So now it's really easy to get my paintbrush, right? Get black as my color, click on my mask where I want to paint, right? And then I'm going to go in, change the size of my brush a little bit, and I'm going to paint the mask and get rid of the areas that I messed up. My only other choice in solving little problems like this, little pieces that I missed when I was trying to do this painting it, is to alt click on your mask and quite frankly easily when you do that you can see right away the areas that need to be painted that are very obvious. You can't really tell the edges but you can tell these areas quite easily. And so I recommend doing that to clean up your mask. You want the cleanest mask possible if you're going to put animate and put this character into an animation or drop him in over another scene or anything like that. You don't want to see these artifacts, these little gray white areas ruining the um, scene on the edges. So I always tr double paint my border. I always double and triple paint my border a little bit more, which I might. I might have taken away a little bit too much here on the tail. I can just flip that back to white 
and give the tail a little more body there. Oops, a little too much. Flip it back to black. Hit X on my keyboard, fit, uh, flip it back to black, and I can go in here and I can paint that back. So that's pretty nice. 